Is it true, as Benjamin Franklin said to the Constitutional Convention almost 225 years ago, that God governs in the affairs of men? If the God of the Bible is there, if God prefers one thing over another and commands obedience from all men and women, what happens when we disobey Him? The history of the world demonstrates that no nation that abandons secure moral moorings can survive. If America were to survive having attempted to divorce itself from God, it would be the first time ever in the history of mankind. Extremely unlikely. In 1934, British anthropologist J.D. Unwin released his seminal work, Sex and Culture, in which he reported the results of his examination of more than 80 societies in an attempt to explain why cultures prospered and then decayed. In 1956, Pitaram Sorokin, the founder of the sociology department at Harvard University, released a similar work titled The American Sex Revolution. Both Unwin and Sorokin found the same symptoms of cultural decay in societies throughout history the growth of huge government bureaucracies, the disregard of the institution of marriage, including ease of divorce, open promiscuity and sexual anarchy, pederasty and homosexuality, a low birth rate as people resort to contraceptives, abortions, and other means for preventing childbirth. But for both Unwin and Sorokin, nothing revealed the extent of a culture's decay more than the people's attitudes and actions regarding sex. The loosening of morality and increased sexual promiscuity was a clear sign that civilizational decay was underway. You know, none of this is new. I mean, this has happened over and over and over again in, in civilizations. J.D. Unwin, 1934, was writing about the fact that, that in his study of multiple uh, countries and, and civilizations, that when they raise to a certain point of, of uh, advancement, then they become highly sexually promiscuous and then they decay very rapidly. You cannot have the kind of sexual excess that we're talking about in this country right now and survive. That's not going to happen. We will collapse. On Sunday night, May 22nd, the Disney-owned ABC network aired the Billboard Music Awards during primetime. The program's opening song was SNM, a duet sung by recording artists Rihanna and Britney Spears. Uh, the sadomasochism is something we're going to sing about. And when you get to a place in a society where we can sing about that and clap about that and think that that does not represent psychopathology at its ultimate, then we know that we are a society that has lost our way. Virtually every major philosopher who's ever looked at the issue of ethics, from Aristotle all the way forward to modern times, has recognized that self-control is the beginning place for, for societal order, where there is no personal, moral exercise of restraint, then ultimately there can be no concentric circles of order and restraint in the society. We undo the future for the sake of the present. The Founding Fathers, of course, were already familiar with the history of previous societies and believed that widespread immorality would prove a direct threat to the survival of the Republic. For example, Samuel Adams said, A general dissolution of principles and manners will more surely overthrow the liberties of America than the whole force of the common enemy. While the people are virtuous, they cannot be subdued. But when once they lose their virtue, then will be ready to surrender their liberties to the first external or internal invader. In light of this, it is perhaps easier to understand our nation's current economic crisis, one that has had the media focused on the potential for severe economic decline for years to come. Sorokin, in fact, argued that widespread immorality would eventually sap a nation's economic strength as well, stating, 
As a rule, in the long run, the material standard of living in the disorderly periods declines, economic development slows down, and economic creativity languishes. There is a direct correlation, in my opinion, between the decay of the nation's morals and the decay of our monetary system and the economics of this country. While the Founding Fathers certainly weren't a group of religious zealots, the idea that God actively judges nations when they sin against Him was clearly part of their worldview. For example, Thomas Jefferson, speaking of the violation of God-given liberties, said, They are not to be violated, but with His wrath. Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that His justice cannot sleep forever. Uh, studies show, history show, that when countries allow their, their societies to become amoral and they allow uh, different kinds of, of immoral activities and lifestyles to flourish, there is a price that's paid, not just by those individuals engaging in that lifestyle or that behavior, but by society as a whole. The Bible says, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, and I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Uh, but if we were to preserve religious freedom for ourselves and for others, for people of all faiths and people of no faith, if we are to protect the sanctity of human life, if we are to honor marriage, then we're going to have to be involved in the public discussion and in the public square. It's time for us to roll up our sleeves and go to work. And not, not just in Washington. It's time to go to work in our hometowns, in our communities, in our churches, in our community associations. We cannot allow our faith uh, to stay at home while we go to school, go to work, and voice our opinions in the public square. Faith must flourish. What people can and should do, I think, is, uh, again, to pray, to study the founders, uh, to stay involved and to not uh, submit meekly to being told what to think by the elites in journalism, the academy, the legal profession, the courts. I think the American people are a lot smarter than some would give them credit for. And we need to listen to the will of the people. That's what our founding fathers knew so well that we can never allow the country to be taken away from we, the people. We need to have a constitutional government. The Founding Fathers gave us a great system, and it's ours to recover, and I think we can recover it. And our society is a good one. It's worth preserving. Our principles are great ones. They're worth honoring. But it means we have to fight to preserve those foundational principles on which all else depends. And so I humbly call on you to say, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? If not this way of making a difference, then what? This is, as Ronald Reagan once said, the last stand for freedom. If it doesn't work here, it's going to disappear from the earth. I love those words uh, that are so powerfully given to us, that it has been entrusted into your hands, you the American people, the sacred fire of liberty this experiment in the Republican form of government. George Washington speaking to us. What are you going to do with this experiment? Is it going to fall because of you? Or are you going to make a difference? Today's the day.